Thanks for joining us this day. It's on your Pan African television. This is uh, Freak Media, and you're live on the Pan African debate coming your way this Saturday. Time again for us to look at some of the burning issues happening around the African continent, and we're taking our eyes focused today on Cameroon, the Central African country, where uh, the U.S. United States Department has indicted three. Uh, United States citizen of Cameroonian origins regarding uh, the situation in the two English speaking regions of the country. The United States uh, uh, citizens of Cameroon origin have been arrested and charged with uh, raising funds for separate fighters in, the, in Cameroon. According to the U.S. Justice Department, the three people indicted were named as uh, Claude Che, Francis Chenyi, and Lester Langmi. In a Justice Department statement released on Monday, they allegedly uh, solicited and raised funds for supplies, weapons, and explosive materials to be used in attacks against Cameroon government uh, personnel and security forces, it said. In addition to more than $350,000, the defendants equally raised through voluntary donations. The uh, indictment equally alleges that Chi uh, Chenyi and Langmi conspired with orders to kidnap civilians in Cameroon and hold them for ransom, according to the statement. What uh, will this uh, indictment uh, mean for the crisis in Cameroon, which has lasted five years? Stay with us as we discuss this topic today on the Pan-African Debate. Stay with us. It's on your panel of consideration this day, uh, Freak Media. We're looking at Cameron as the uh, United States begins arrest of uh, persons involved in the crisis in Cameron's two English speaking regions. Uh, the crisis which began as a simple protest in 2016 before uh, moving into a full armed conflict in 2017 uh, continues to uh, claim lives. Properties have been destroyed, persons have been displaced, many have been kidnapped for ransom. Three U.S. citizens of Cameroon origin are presently in the custody in the United States regarding uh, their involvement in the crisis, which of course is still in Cameroon. What impact would this have on the crisis in Cameroon is what we are looking at this day on the program. Thanks for joining us. We shall appreciate your comments. You can leave them live on our Facebook page. The program is streamed live on Facebook on Africa Media. And joining us is uh, the to discuss on this situation in Cameroon, the impact of the arrest of uh, uh, those involved uh, with uh, sponsoring the crisis in Cameroon. We have uh, uh, Mr. Bufong Javans, he's a teacher and entrepreneur. Thanks for joining us in the program. Thank you, Liz. Good afternoon to the viewers of uh, Africa Media. It's once my pleasure joining you this afternoon so that we look into what is happening, what has been happening in Cameroon for the past five years, counting and is still yeah. happening, and the impact of the United States uh, uh, indictment on some Cameroonians or, or U.S. citizens of Cameroonian origin yeah. on the, uh, regards to their activities as far as the, the, the crisis is concerned. Uh, exactly. Uh, that's our focus this day. We equally have joining us uh, by Zoom is the National Communication Secretary for uh, the Popular Action Party, Mr. Gene Elvis Bane. You join us from Cameroon's political headquarters here on the Mr. Uh, Gene Elvis Bane. Thanks for joining us in the program. We play uh, 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 Mr. Gene Elvis uh, Bane, National Communication Secretary for the Popular Action Party, joining us from Wundi Vaizu. Mr. Gene Elvis, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, good afternoon, Big Ben Luis. Good afternoon to all our co panelists. I think I'm, uh, I'm on 5 and 5. It's a pleasure being here. Thanks very much for accepting our invitation. We have uh, Dr. Nicolas Ngu Santo. He's the president of uh, One Cameroon Congress, Dr. Nicolas Ngu Santo. Uh, thanks for being there. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure again being on board after a very long while. We are to accept our invitation. We equally have uh, Nso Foncha, Chairman of New Africa Coalition Front and President of uh, Southwest Indigenous People Association, Mr. Nso Foncha. 
Uh, thanks for being there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lewis, and thank you to Afric Media, and also thank you to the Indomitable Lions for their wonderful performance yesterday, and also to the panelists. I'm grateful to be here. We appreciate you all for accepting our invitation this day. Right away, let's uh, get into our discussion uh, topic, looking at the indictment of uh, three uh, U.S. citizens of Cameroonian origin are presently under custody in the United States. They are involved mainly in the crisis in Cameroon. They are set to uh, involve in raising funds to supply weapons as well as uh, kidnapping for ransom. Mr. Javan, the crisis in Cameroon, just like you highlighted in your uh, opening statement still continues we are facing uh, a crisis without a solution or way out at this particular moment and uh, news of the arrests of three um, involved in the sponsoring of the crisis in Cameroon uh, came in on Monday what do you think this means to the crisis on the ground did you have any uh, was there any news of how the news or this issue was welcome on ground zero as a colleague uh, absolutely, I might not be able to give the exact uh, reaction of the people on Ground Zero, but there is one thing which I'm certain about. We know that the 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 the, the breadth of every crisis is a source of uh, funding, and we know that if the funds are being affected, or uh, then obviously there there should be a, a direct reaction that will 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 see playing on the ground. Mm -hmm. We know that the United States are, uh, as a country, they have charges they have against these people first, against the United States laws, yeah. not yet against the, the laws of the Republic of Cameroon. So now, when we, when we look at the impact that the crisis have had on the, on the Cameroonian people for the past five years, which we are still witnessing to date, in fact, they are becoming devastating by the day, we can say that, yes, if these people have been indicted by a United States uh, Department or a United States Court of Law, it might play on how other members or on other contributors that uh, are playing an active role in this crisis might see how they, are, they will tend to re react or to attend or to carry on their various objectives because these people have been indicted i think with about four different charges we have raising funds material sports money laundering and so on and so forth so anybody that is involved in this crisis in such a department or in such a capacity will know that maybe whatever they are doing does not only relate to the people of cameroon but also relates to where he or she is and then how do the government or how do the laws of those particular areas react or treat such a situation because it wouldn't actually be a problem if actually the laws of such uh, of an environment where you carry your activities doesn't actually maybe see it as a problem but if it is punishable by the law then you know that you are going against the law so i think that these people that have been arrested and are currently they are expected of course to plead whether guilty or not guilty in the court of law uh, i think that those that are going to be involved or those that have been involved in the crisis would then start analyzing to see if what they are doing does it actually ties with the laws of the country that is cohabitating where they are cohabitating does it actually makes them law-abiding citizens of the countries where they carry their passport the countries where they think or where they believe they are now citizens of the country because if you are going against it then you should know you are not actually abiding to the law of your country and at any point of uh, any point in time the law might caught up with you and once the law caught up with you obviously there will be a repercussion on the, on ground zero as it is normally called because what obviously you have been doing will be limited it might be restricted and maybe a, a faction or maybe those you directly work with on ground zero might face the impact the impact might not be that uh, they might also be arrested no of course it can be that the lack of the form who obviously limit their activities we have seen we know that most of the operations that are being carried back then they are, they are they are facilitated by funds and when we see that funds are being targeted or the sources of funding are being targeted then it's no question or there should be no doubt that obviously it will reflect on their activities but my our major focus or our major worry should be how or, 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 over which span would, will, it, will it cut across? Because we know that this crisis, actually, there are many people involved in the crisis. So just three people might create an impact which might not be very much significant.
And the impact is what we are examining uh, this afternoon. Let's uh, get over to Yaoundé to talk with you, Mr. Engineer of this banner. The arrest of three uh, involved in the, the crisis in Cameroon in the United States. Mr. Engineer of this, do you think this is going to have a direct impact on the crisis which has been going on for the past uh, five years and counting? Thank you, Mr. Big Ben. I'm um, uh, asking if there's going to be an impact. Somehow I could say yes, but talking about a direct impact, I actually do doubt if there is actually going to be a direct impact. Reason being that when we look at um, uh, the three that have been indicted so far, we may begin to start by asking ourselves the question, what weight those three actually do, do carry as opposed to the others who are actually um, uh, the brains behind the whole crisis that we know when I say the brains, I mean the, 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 the main person that perhaps uh, do head the different organizations that um, uh, are sponsoring um, uh, the fighters back on ground zero. So I wonder if there's going to be any direct impact. Secondly, I equally doubt if there is going to be a direct impact back here, uh, in the country because we know too that some of the uh, generals that we have back in, on ground zero are people who don't even answer or who are no longer answerable to any of the different factions that we have now have uh, 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 spread all over uh, the US, Belgium, Germany, and other places. So the question now is, if you are arresting persons who perhaps do not have any direct um, uh, control or control over some of the fighters that we have on ground, can that create an impact? Already at my level, I say there is uh, a, a doubt at that level. And like I've already mentioned, I wonder if there's going to be a direct, like you put it, direct impact because some of the people that have arrest, that are arrested, I still see, we also need to find out who actually they are and uh, what weight they carry when it comes to maybe, let me say, giving instructions to those who are back here on ground zero. But let me tell you, Mr. Bidben, that my greatest concern as of now, we are seated here on a pan -African channel and I want to also look at it from that perspective. My greatest concern for now is not the idea of arresting people in the U.S. or back here in Cameroon and all or not. My greatest worry is that if we go by what Yaoundé has often said, that um, uh, the crisis is an internal affair, then we should first and foremost as a people sit back here within us, among, amongst us, and see how we can try to resolve this issue amongst us as a people. We should stop as Africans always wanting to give this impression that we are sovereign states but each time we have a worry, we think that until the U.S. comes in to say something, until France comes in to say something, until Germany or maybe the European Union comes in to say something, we cannot act as a people. I want to think that if we go by virtue of age, 60 years of independence, if a country were a person, then we are talking about a man who is 60 years of age today and should be able to sit and handle the affairs on, in his own house as a man that he is. We should not always want to turn around to think that until a, a never A or B or C say something or comes in to intervene, we cannot resolve our own issues. Why are they claiming to be a sovereign state? So for now, I still say I keep my doubts as to that there's actually going to be any positive direct impact as far as the crisis are concerned. Somehow, even if there is going to be a direct impact, it could also be in the negative because the people you are arresting, you don't know exactly the direct influence that they also have on ground and how it may rather go to to influence those fighters to perhaps want to retaliate the other way around. Thank you. Appreciate that, uh, Mr. Gene Elvis. We got you clearly. Uh, Dr. Nick Santo, you are uh, based in the United States and you're president of uh, one Cameroon Congress. We're looking at the impact of those arrested uh, back then in the United States. Do you think it's going to have an impact on the crisis in Cameroon? Five years and counting, and it's still ongoing. Do you think uh, U.S. coming in, stepping in, arrest uh, some uh, of those uh, involved in sponsoring the crisis could have an impact? What do you think is going to happen? Thank you very much for asking me that question. Um, uh, the first point I would like to say is that um, uh, you must be surprised, or most of you are surprised, to see my name begins today with honorable, which is something that I don't play with. I was an honoree. I was an honoree by the United States President, Joe Biden. I received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the White House. And now I, my name begins a little bit with Honorable Dr. Sandu, which means that I have been trusted for speaking the truth. I've been trusted, empowered for, for, being, a, for being a psychologist in the United States, 
one who observes things and one who does recommendations based on prognosis or based on diagnostic assessment of a situation. Um, you know, I have brothers in the Ambazonia struggle and I also have brothers in the government. And so when I speak, I have to be objective, to be candid. When uh, the government officials who are war entrepreneurs carry this kind of information, spread it all over to appear as a victory, a victory and an end to the crisis, it's dramatization of the situation. It is over uh, creating a lot of anxiety and a lot of uh, like uh, being too happy about the situation, thinking that it happens like in Cameroon. It is the opposite. When you are in that, when charges are brought upon someone in the United States, there is free, fair judgment. You have a right to appear in court and prove if these things that are brought against you are true or they are wrong. Okay, talking about the participants here of this of this crisis, those who are participating directly or indirectly, of which some of us, myself, so Foncha, were at the forefront of this when it all began. But we back, we 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 we, we, we changed our position when we discovered that the persons hijacked the struggle, hijacked the genuine cry for freedom and mar marginalization protest to become something of extortion, kidnapping, cutting of hands, arms, cutting of limbs, and all those, uh, using it like to raise money, raising of money was on two fronts. There are government ministers who are also making money from the government and making the situation worse. We call them war entrepreneurs. War entrepreneurs came in, armed robbers came in. So now, let's look at it. If there are evidence that you are involved directly or indirectly in a war crime, you will not be spared. Those in the U.S., what the FBI is looking at this level is the FBI, take note, is the FBI and the U.S. courts, not Interpol or whatsoever Salai firm is saying, these people had normally to be to be investigated within the United States because first they have monies in their bank accounts that are unaccountable. Monies are in their bank accounts and in the US, in the United States, if you have ten thousand dollars in your bank account, you receive a signal on your telephone and you have to justify when you are filing your tax, where did this money come from? So these people, the first thing the FBI is looking at is the amount of monies that were in their bank accounts. How did they get them? Where did the money come from? What organization did they run to raise this kind of money? So this is an entire U.S. affair and will be tried by the U.S. courts on those basis. If they are found guilty that they were taking money on the ground, uh, they had connection on the ground of kidnapping people, and money is coming into the United States unaccountable, that is Exhibit A. Then secondly, They'll be looking at their phone calls. What kind of messages do you do go through when you converse with people? What kind of information do you pass around? Do you give others or instructions for people to be killed on the ground? Do you? Because let me tell you, this is not a banana republic. The United States is not a banana republic. It is not where judges have been influenced to pass death sentences on people without evidence. You are called in the court. You have to bring your evidence. You have to you have to go through your communications. They have to go through your bank accounts. They have to go through everything about you. Where do you work? Uh, how regular are you at your job site? I mean, what people say about you, they cross-examine. And if they find out that you are not guilty, you will be released. Last year, we had others who were indicted. Mangang was amongst and others. Today, we have not seen whether the case has been concluded because this case can take two, three years only to go and appear in court, be adjourned, and you have to look for more evidence, more investigation. So it shouldn't be a jubilation back in Cameroon because the fact is this issue has to be resolved peacefully, negotiably, amicably amongst the stakeholders on the widows at the forefront and those ministers who are war entrepreneurs also have to back out because they are the ones making things worse they are the ones paying all those lobby firms firms here but this they have entered into business deals with these lobby firms whereby they collect money from here when they rush over here and negotiate with these people keep some money in their own bank accounts buy houses abroad and i mean this has been a, a something that if i want to talk about i am criticizing the both sides that are guilty of war crimes them. I wish that after these three persons, other persons also will be indicted, and the, those in the Cameroon government, ministers also, who are at the forefront of this, have to be indicted as well. Uh, Dr. Nick Santo, we got you clearly. 
and uh, the wishes, of course, for many is that the crisis is resolved, but the step taken by the United States is different from that which many are expecting that the United States should have taken, but then we are still waiting to get reactions on uh, how this race is going to create impact on the ground with regards to the crisis which is ongoing. Mr. Uh, so Foncha, chairman of the new uh, New Africa Coalition Front and president of Southwest Indigenous People Association. Uh, what do you think about the arrest of uh, this person in the United States? Just like uh, Dr. Nick Santo mentioned, uh, this is not the first time those uh, involved in crisis in Cameroon are being uh, caught up by uh, the State Department or the Security Department of the United States. Now, what do you think? Uh, many are expecting that this could possibly create an impact on the situation on ground. Do you think? Uh, the arrests of these three persons will have much to uh, as an impact on what is happening in Cameroon's English-speaking regions. Uh, yes, uh, I have two track opinions here. The United States of America has a foreign policy objectives for Africa and Cameroon in particular. And the United States of America has its own internal laws. And those laws forbid any United States citizen from state sponsor of terrorism or participating or financing terrorism in any foreign country. But the United States of American law does not prohibit an American citizen for participating in fighting for people's inalienable right to self-determination, like what some American citizens are doing today in Ukraine and different parts of the world. Now, the question is, does this impact the situation on the ground? I want to speak directly to the question you asked me. I don't want to concentrate on American law and American foreign policy. No, it does not impact the situation on the ground because the secessionist movement has morphed into factions of financial criminal syndicates, which means the various fighting factions on the ground are now autonomous and independent in the same Spain, it does not matter how much money is raised from the diaspora and funneling to these various groups on the ground these fighting factions on the ground what we call generals or what what not they are self-financing from their activities of kidnapping extortion home invasion they are not answerable to the degree that we think to the, the so-called leaders in the diaspora the leaders in the diaspora are illusionary leaders thinking the funds they are generating here through enemies necessary and sending over to the ground those funds will buy the loyalties to the various fighting factions it's the other way around those factions on the ground fighting they are only using the diaspora at this point in time as an instrument to get foreign currency in order to facilitate their enterprise. So, this crisis and what has just happened in the United States doesn't really have any impact on the ground because the entire war machine within the Northwest and the Southwest problem, uh, provinces or Northwest and Southwest regions of Cameroon today have now become independent franchises. And they are self-financing on the ground because I know personally factions on the ground that actually mandate people's cocoa farm, take the cocoa from those farms and sell. I know factions of the ground that commandeer rubber from CDC and sell those rubber in Gali. Those factions on the ground actually, they raise more money from the ground than the monies that have been sent from the diaspora. So arresting three individuals in the United States should be a United States problem to deal with these citizens who are of Cameroonian origin that are sponsoring terrorism in a foreign country which happens to be Cameroon. So Cameroonians should not be jubilating that arresting these three individuals will mitigate or stop the bloodshed that is happening in the Northwest and Southwest region. Because, as I said, the various fighting factions on the ground are autonomous right now, and they are independent financial criminal syndicates. I've been saying this for quite some time. Even the diaspora right now, even the diaspora, like the three that were arrested, I know them. 
I know the way that was in this struggle. These individuals are scammers, like the Nigerian store 419. They collect some of the money from our struggling sisters who are nurses over here, and they send a little bit over there. They scam from this money. They scam from this money. So the same financial criminal cartels or syndicates that are taking place, that are operating in the southwest and regions of Cameroon, is the same that is happening here in the diaspora. People like Chris Arnold, people like Sako Samuel Akome, people like uh, Ayabacho Lucas. All these people are right now running an international financial criminal syndicate that I think in order for this to have an impact, the Cameroon government should be coming to talk to people like us, talk to people like Dr. Honorable Dr. Nicolas Santos, for us to be material witnesses in any type of international setting or court to be able to pinpoint exactly how this financial criminal cartels are being run by people like Ayaba Lucas, people like um, uh, Sato Samuel, people like Chris Arnold, people like Eric Tato. This thing has become an international criminal cartel. And this international criminal cartel has been franchised. So it does not have any impact on the ground, these three arrests, until the government knows where to put their chips. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much. We got your opinion. Uh, Mr. Germans, the fact that Cameroon government has uh, been pleading with uh, countries hosting uh, separatist activists to react, to indict them, to extradite them to Cameroon. I look at what is happening in the U.S. Do you think it's related to the request Cameroon had earlier made for maybe U.S. to indict those persons sponsoring uh, the separatist activities on the ground? Do you think it's closely related? Many believe that it's uh, an internal U.S. affair. And what do you think? Is it uh, related in any way? Absolutely, it is not related uh, to the best of my knowledge. It isn't related because, uh, as uh, one of the panelists rightly stated, the United States uh, uh, is, a, is a country of, uh, uh, it's a sovereign country, of course, with their internal laws. If it was uh, actually a, a, a cooperation between uh, uh, the U.S. playing to the tone of the Cameroonian government, I think that there could have been more of... Uh, the, 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 those people couldn't have even been wasting time in the United States because the, the United States will not just pick up somebody and then they'll send him to Cameroon or they will not speak... They, 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 they have to go through their process, the, the process of investigations. And for now, we know that these people are investigating and are tabled be be before the U.S. law and are supposed to prove whether guilty or not before U.S. law. And if you look at the the charges that I've given against them that are charges with respect to the U.S. law and not charges with respect to the Cameroonian law. And if you look right. at the possible sanctions, there are still sanctions according to the U.S. laws and not those of the Cameroonian laws. So for now, I think that it is an internal affair that concerns strictly the United States of America. There is a possibility that within the course, as the, the, the U.S. going ahead with their proceeding, if they find or if they discover that these people are actually uh, maybe uh, guilty of what they are, they are charged of, then they can look into the possibilities of extradition. But now in looking into the possibilities of extradition, there is something we should understand. That these people are Cameroonian born, but they are not Cameroonian citizens. Does the U.S. law permit the U.S. to actually extradite a U.S. citizen to a foreign country that they have maybe funded terrorism, they all funded activities that violate human rights to that country. I don't think so. I stand to be corrected on that. So actually, if it is that they were still Cameroonian citizens, then we can be looking at the possibility of Cameroon telling the U.S. that no, this is this these people are our citizens. Return back these people to us. Let us maybe judge these people based on our laws. But we are talking about people that have naturalized. They are carrying on the United States. Um, passport they have the citizenship of the united states so by every by everything we know that united states citizens we know that our constitution in cameroon doesn't permit dual nationality in fact if you have a second nationality automatically you are not longer a cameroonian citizen do we actually think that it will be possible for the united states to send their citizen back to a country that they don't own the nationality yeah. to actually face the law those are the things we should be looking uh, we should be looking at I don't think that we can be giving credit to maybe the battle between the, or maybe the pleas of the government that the, the, that the United States or maybe any country uh, 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 any country uh, 
that there are separatist leaders there. This is a win for them. No, this is actually not a win. As one of the panelists state, stated, maybe these uh, people have just maybe not defended what they have in their accounts, or maybe the sources of their finances cannot be justifiable. Of course, we know that as a United States citizen, any money you make in any part of the world, be it even when you are out of your country, you have to justify it so that you should at least be held accountable for. So if these people have failed to uh, to be accountable uh, uh, to be accountable for what they have in their accounts of uh, monies that are, they have managed over a period of time they have the right to be indicted or the, the united states have the right to indict them and it is all left to them to present their facts to argue their facts to make it clear or to prove that maybe they are not involved in state or sponsored terrorism in another country or they are not involved in separatist activities in another country which cameroon actually happens to be concerned now it could be the case with any other country not only with cameroon with cameroon but in this case since these are cameroonian born uh, u.s citizens that are directly being accused of a situation that affects cameroon i think that uh, we should allow the u.s do their work if they do their work and then they decide to punish the people according to the united states laws good and fine but i know that if a time comes that there is supposed to be an extradition or these people are supposed to come to Cameroon, the U.S. will have to consider if it is possible for these people to regain their Cameroonian citizenship, for them to come back to Cameroon, or these people are supposed maybe the U.S. will now say that, okay, maybe they cannot handle the situation or they cannot punish their citizens. Cameroon should do that. I think that all of that, the process or the law will, will, will actually take its course. It is not left for us to, to, to maybe see or to maybe give credit, credits to the government on that. There is one more point yeah, I wanted to add about. You had that. earlier mentioned that we should uh, focus on resolving, uh, looking for African solutions to African problems. And we're looking at a crisis in Cameroon, which uh, three persons of uh, U.S. Uh, nationality have uh, been indicted in relation to the crisis in Cameroon. Now, uh, you say the crisis in Cameroon is an internal uh, issue and should be resolved internally. But we have people who are of different nationality causing uh, what the U.S. State Department or U.S. has uh, said uh, sponsoring of uh, terrorism activity which involves kidnapping, providing materials for destruction. Now, those in Cameroon are hoping that the crisis should come to an end. And uh, when those outside who are not directly involved with uh, or not directly concerned or should I say feeling the impact of the situation on ground are sponsoring or partaking in the continuation of the crisis, do you think uh, we should not be concerned? Mr. Gina Elvis. I will tell you that um, before I get to the idea of U.S. citizens being indicted or maybe the Cameroon government clamoring that they be, perhaps, I don't know, extra, uh, extra to Cameroon or whatever thing. Let me see, tell you one thing. That if the crisis is where it is today, it is because Yawunde was so uh, unfamous, Yawunde was so uh, failed uh, uh, lamentably in being able to handle the situation. Come to think of it, when this thing started in 2016, if the government of Cameroon had listened to what was proposed, be it by politicians, by political parties, be it by a <laughs> and other uh, organizations, we, we would have been where we are today. Remember that they were the first who transfer, who, 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 who tapped the consortium leaders as terrorists and sent them to jail simply because consortium leaders did not agree with them on certain issues. In other words, what I'm saying is that Yawunde made things go out of hand. Secondly, they connect with, Yaw with, with Nigeria, for instance, to, uh, to, to, to have um, Ayuk and Co. Uh, kidnap and brought it over to Cameroon. Since then, if I may ask what has happened, it will also take the thousands of former British Southern Cameroonians who are languishing in jail all across the nation. Has that changed anything? On the contrary, we have been yeah. born to the So what I'm actually saying here, Mr. Bidben, is that Cameroon or should I say Yaoundé should not focus much on whether the U.S. can arrest and send people back to Cameroon for judgment and all that, because even within Cameroon, we have people, government officials, individuals who have been eating fat from this crisis, who don't want it to come to an end, but they themselves are unable to indict these people, bring them to book, and also get some clarity from what is happening within their country. But they think that it's only when the U.S. brings in people that things will change. I say no. 
Secondly, now when we go back to the idea of the US, it's true, we cannot be in Cameroon and we are seeking a solution to a problem that we term a purely a Cameroonian problem and people are still in the diaspora who do not perhaps actually feel the direct pinch of what is happening on ground zero and they are sponsoring. But unfortunately, what we should also understand here is that the US is not Nigeria. They might arrest people back there, but they are going to judge them as U.S. citizens following the laws of that country and not necessarily send them back to Cameroon. And uh, like somebody rightly said, people should not sit in Cameroon and want to take credit for what they have not done. People should not sit in Cameroon and want to take credit for what they cannot do. And uh, permit me to tell you, Mr. Bidman, that when we even talk about the impact of the arrest of these three persons, it may only go a long way to promote the more in Cameroon as far as the crisis is concerned because people are already trying to claim the fact that if there were some arrests in the U.S., they vote for it when we know that was not the case. It means that what? they will still go back to the state of Cameroon, ask for more funds, which they will siphon and put in their pockets. Why? Because they want to claim that they are using it to lobby back there in the U.S. for more, uh, let's say, U.S. citizens or Cameroonians to be arrested for sponsoring. That is not the case. There is no impact whatsoever. We are praying for a lasting solution to this problem. But I want to think that at the level of Cameroon, we should begin and we, we should begin by being um, uh, part objective and realistic in the things that we do. Back here in the country, there are so many things that need to be done that can already be a step towards um, uh, resolving the issue. We have called, for instance, I love the, uh, the PAP and other political uh, parties for the release of all those who were arrested in connection to the Amazon crisis, because we know thousands and thousands of our people who have either died or are languishing in jail for what they do not know. Their simple crime, their simple crime being the fact that they are former British Southern Cameroonians. How do you think that you can resolve an internal problem when you go into families, deprive them of their husbands, of their wives, of their brothers and children and cousins and all and you jail them? For crimes that they have never committed just because they come from a particular part of the country or perhaps simply because they speak a particular language. That are the those are some of the failures that Yawunde has, but does not want to write these failures. On the contrary, they are trying to think or give the impression that if the the, 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 the fighting continues in the northwest and it is because there are some people in the diaspora and all not. I do not think so. And uh, I would like to uh, say something with respect to what um, Dr. Nick Santos said. He said he's now called an honorable. Doctor, I appreciate and I congratulate you for that. And you mentioned something about trust. I don't know if the trust was given to you by the American state or at the level of Yaoundé, you are also trusted. Because I remember during our last my older session, and I keep repeating, I will wish that some of you who were at the forefront of this crisis and who today have changed camps and maybe have come back to the sense of it, and with all that trust that you talk about, I would have loved that you come back to ground zero and be able to put your expertise to play to see how we can also talk sense to our brothers and especially those who are carrying arms so that you can see reason and be able to drop the arms. Believe you me, Big Ben, that when you go back to the Northwest and the Southwest today, if the former British Southern Cameroonians are beginning to turn their backs against the Amber fighters, it is not down to what the government of Cameroon has done. No, it is simply because they who claim that they were fighting for their own people also turned around and became thieves. They became kidnappers. They started kidnapping people for ransom and other things. That is why people are turning their back against them. But it is not because of what the government has been able to do. Because, believe me, if the Amber fighters stood by what they had announced to the people and they fought genuinely in that line, the government of Cameroon should be facing more difficulties even now as we talk. So what I would say here is that Yaoundé and Cameroonians should not go jubilating about the arrest of three individuals in the USA who may not even have any direct uh, uh, impact even within the diaspora, but we should rather start by thinking of how we can begin to resolve our own issues internally. The USA is not a fool, and they cannot easily take people from the US and send them back to Cameroon to be judged back here when they know how our judicial system back here is. We have people here who go to jail and they die without being judged, without ever being um, uh, uh, officially notified as to what they did that was wrong or not. So Yawinde should rather review his judicial system. Yawinde should rather review his justice system, his policies, and try to be very, very objective in resolving the Anglophone crisis. Yawinde should learn that we must go back to the root causes of the crisis. We must go back to our history and begin to write things from where we went wrong. That is what I can say. There is nothing like hoping that because three persons have been picked up in the USA, that is going to be the beginning of something. No. On the contrary, like I earlier mentioned in my preliminary state, uh, statement, uh, in which this arrest can even go a long way to in also provoking more persons because the people you have picked up today, you don't know what their own relatives back 
here in the country could also feel and what they could also want to do in retaliation for the fact that their own relatives have been picked up. So we should try to look at the thing from both perspectives, but I want to focus on Cameroon. If we insist that this issue is an internal issue, we should not at one point in time be hypocritical in thinking that people in the diaspora are solely responsible. Yaoundé as a government has failed woefully in handling the crisis and we keep insisting they should come back to their senses, go back to the root causes and understand that this is a political uh, issue that can only be handled politically and not through the bar of the gun. They should understand that we need to sit around the table as a people and we talk as brothers and sisters and resolve. If Cameroonians today, particularly the former British Southern Cameroonians, decide that they want a third system of government, for instance, it is their political right to decide that it is not an individual to sit in your own day and hit his fist on the table and tell you that the form of the state can never change and then the whole country needs to go in chaos because of that one individual. Thank you. Service uh, Jinder yeah. Bane, Popular Action Party Communication Secretary. We got your opinion clearly. And uh, we talk with you, Dr. Nick Santo. Uh, I know you've got uh, maybe a reaction to what uh, Mr. Jinder said. But then you had earlier mentioned about, talked about uh, war entrepreneurship, which of course many are using the situation in Cameroon to now uh, make funds or make money for themselves. And the U.S. equally is now uh, doing its arrest. The three persons are equally involved in uh kidnapping conspiracy uh with the kidnappings for ransom on the ground and the fact that the government of cameroon according to mr Gine, is responsible in resolving a crisis we have this situation the government officials are involved in making money with the crisis as well as those outside of cameroon are equally involved in making money from the crisis now how do you think we can resolve all these the government has to maybe stop those who are maybe fund doing fund funding the crisis from outside or uh, giving orders for people to be kidnapped for ransom as well as looking to resolve the crisis. How do we get out of this situation? Uh, thank you very much for that very important question. And I'm glad Mr. Evis Bane did mention some points about me. I'm very happy that you mentioned that. Uh, uh, Marshal Foncha is here and he will bear witness that uh, when we sat behind at, during the time front of the leadership of Sako Ekome and Siseko Ayok Julius Tabi, who is who are in jail, when we were working with them together, we were working on peaceful faces of trying to see how we can resolve this problem with the government, how we go into dialogue, how we could go into mediation, how we could go into discussions until the doors were all closed by Yaoundé. And when the doors were closed by Yaoundé, these guys picked up arms. When they picked up arms, other opportunists came in, arm robbers, kidnappers, and others came in. And Iron Funcha, as well as others like Yannick Sikot and a group of others that we successfully embarked on a peaceful mission. We, we founded the Peace Task Force Initiative. We founded the Peace Ambassadors. We founded the Ghana Peace Conference. We, we founded all the other organizations and even the CDN, the Coalition for Negotiation and Di uh, Dialogue, were in the Peace Committee, Peace and Humanitarian Committees. We have worked with Yaoundé. We have given a lot of proposals to Yaoundé. Ministers have come here to the United States. They have sat with me. They have sat with Foncha. They have sat with us. We have written projects on peaceful resolution of these issues. But you know what they do? The next day, go and collect budget on the implementation of peace turn it and appoint their own persons and mis mis implement what is crafted out of our own intelligence on how to go about this and they take the back road rather than taking the front road that we prescribe they take the back road why do they take the back road? because i've seen it as an enterprise for making money i mean we have been frustrated about this because let me say if we are arresting people for kidnapping, we should arrest the ministers also for taking the bad road towards the solving of this conflict. Some of them are guilty of war crimes. When the FBI does its own work, the International Criminal Court also should do its own work because there were killings in Gabu that they accepted. Have those people been indicted and imprisoned as well? So let me tell you, there is no back road to solving this conflict. There's one way. The only one way to solve this conflict is meet people like us who had been there before and who are now, for the sake of the Cameroonian nation, working towards one Cameroon, 
working towards how we can offer our services for free pro bono i've been doing psychoanalysis psychotherapy for this revolution this revolution for everybody i don't favor only my brothers of the english and the french that are english cameroon side who are fighting for their freedom and other things i also favor the fact that cameroon should remain one and also the government should respect what he has promised the decentralization the, 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 the decentralization as well as the uh, the special status of which none has been implemented the governors are still there the SGOs are still there. We have presidents of the regions who are inactive, who are like robust terms. We have not seen any presidential decree from the president of Northwest or the president of Southwest. Figureheads. We will say we are implementing even the decentralization, even the special status. It's not there because the NGOs are still there. The governors are still there. What are they still doing there? What are they still doing there? So let us solve this problem by listening to the beautiful solutions, success and cover. Marshall Foncha, myself, Yannick Secot, and others that we successfully pulled out of the ambas to try to work for the interests of Cameroon. That's all I have to tell you. If they don't take this stand and they continue doing what they're doing, almost everybody down there will be indicted, as well as the people here will be indicted, those who are guilty of war crimes. Then when they come to one earlier speaker spoke about whether you have nationality or talk about the national, national naturalization issue. You can still have Cameroonian citizenship, but once you have declared political asylum or refugee, you are under the United Nations. So extra is very difficult if you have asked for political asylum or you have become a refugee, know that you are under the United Nations, although this country here harbors you. It means that it's difficult to extradite you to Cameroon. Instead, you can be sent to the Hague, the ICJ. To, uh, 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 to Holland, to the Netherlands, in the Hague, because you are if you are guilty of war crimes, like cutting of arms, uh, giving money for those people to uh, or through your communications, you have passed a judgment on certain people. For example, when I heard about the passing of judgment by the so-called war council of Ayabacho, whereby they said the Regina Munzi will be executed on a certain day, I told them that if they try that. Some of us are willing to work with the FBI to hand them over because you can't just pick somebody's mother and kill like that. And you sit in your bedroom abroad and you you, you, you constitute a, a, a law court that passes death sentence on somebody in Cameroon without you having been in any law school or being a lawyer anywhere. That is laws into your hands and that is war crime. And I'm happy that when some of us shouted about that, they stopped that nonsense and they were money. We have done that a lot. I and Foncha and the others, we have acted a lot by mounting pressures on these guys not to carry out some of these barbaric acts. And that, unfortunately, when we give our proposals on how to solve this problem to government ministers, they take it and go and make their money. And they never come back to us to tell us about what are, what, what, what are the, 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 the feedbacks of these proposals we have given on how to solve this issue. Because we talk with government officials and we also talk with these hardliners. We also talk with Ayabacho, we talk with Seseko, we talk with Sako, we talk with Daphne Yarima, Yarima. we talk with John Bakoro. So I and Foncha are in the position. So Foncha, myself, Success Koa and others, we have been working in good faith, but we are being also disappointed by the people that the government of Cameroon is sending over here to meet us because they never do anything out of good faith that will give them. And these things we are doing is for free without asking any money from them. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Nick Santu, thank you. We got you. Uh, let me hear from you, uh, Mr. So Foncha. Uh, what do you think? Uh, Dr. Nick is insisting that uh, you guys uh, uh, stand a better chance, those of you who had pulled back from uh, the crisis stand a better chance but uh, so far some of the factions uh, in the crisis uh, the separatist crisis the ideologies uh, do not tie with your ideologies and uh, they consider those of you pulled back as black leg as it is commonly referred now how do you think you can maybe resolve the crisis if uh, you guys are not in the same or on the same line of ideology with those of who are still on the other camp well, um, as I've said earlier, the various secessionist factions are now autonomous and their franchises, they operate independently. 
in as much as the diaspora contributes money and sends to them and declare themselves leaders. But what I want to make very clear to you all is this. In order to resolve this crisis in Cameroon, it's the grassroots, the people we need to be focusing on, the aspirations of the people, like I said in the beginning, the right to self-determination is an alienable right, like some of the other panels, panelists have mentioned in different, in different ways. Now, within my own region, the southwest region of Cameroon, I can categorically say the vast majority of indigenous-born Southwesterners have moved away or abandoned the idea of lumping the South region and the Northwest region as a single political entity under any circumstances. The government has already made the first move, which I think is a positive one, by laying the foundation for regionalism and decentralization. But we all know this policy of regionalism and decentralization is not yet effective. And this policy has been handed to kleptocrats, corrupt officials, to try to implement it, rather than giving the power to the grassroots in those various communities, in the case of regionalism and decentralization, all respective 10 regions of Cameroon. So this crisis will end tomorrow, if at all, this policy of regionalism and decentralization becomes effective by giving power to the various grassroots organizations like mine, Southwest Indigenous People's Association, and so many other across the 10 regions of the country, and effectuate it by giving administrative powers to the people of the region to be able to elect their own chief executive officers from regional level to divisional level to subdivisional level. So we must not focus on what the little secessionist fighting groups are doing, but rather empowering the grassroots of the various regions, in this case, Southwest and Northwest region. Because I can tell you today, Mr. Luis, if the Cameroon government gets up tomorrow and organize a well transparent voting for the rights of the people in the southwest region and north region for them to be able to govern themselves regionally under a united federal Cameroon, one Cameroon, that with powers given to the various regions, I can certainly guarantee you that that vote will overwhelmingly successful, not only in the Southwest, not only in the Northwest, but across the entire Cameroon in all 10 respective regions. So the government should not be jubilating, the people in Cameroon should not be jubilating about American laws and American citizens get arrested over here for sponsoring terrorism in a foreign country. The government and the people of Cameroon should focus on empowering the grassroots and using the very that I have embraced, that Dr. Nicolas Santos has embraced, and many others, the policy of regionalism that our late chief emeritus who found Victor Mukete was hollering in the chambers of the Cameroon Senate before he passed away. So those are some of the things that the Cameroon government should be focusing to bring this struggle, this fighting in the Northwest and Southwest region to an end, empower the grassroots, and I guarantee the government, this crisis will end. And that is what we, the people of the Southwest region, which I happen to be the president of SWIPA, Southwest Indigenous People's Organization, is comprised of chiefs across the Southwest region. It's comprised of ex fighters, combatants like Kara Yani, um, um, uh, like people like Clovis, Atasan Bertus. They are all in this association. And when we start empowering this type of people, who have given up their arms and some of our traditional leaders to work and mobilize our grassroots, what will happen is 
the secessionist fighters, the various factions, will be signed, will be surrounded, serpentine, and do away once, once and for all. Because if the community turns their back on these fighters, I guarantee you, the fighting will end. That is where I am, and I won't be so long on this panel anymore because I have a flight out of um, the United States heading to South America in a, a couple of hours from now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, so, uh Foncha, for the opinion. We got that clearly. And uh, you emphasize on the effective uh, decentralization, and we understand that this was uh, one of the recommendations of a 2019 major national dialogue held in Cameroon with regards to resolving the crisis in Cameroon. Uh, three years since the major national dialogue, Mr. Javans, we were uh, still here. Uh, Foncha highlighted effective decentralization as a way out, as a way uh, towards resolving the crisis. If power is handed to the local, uh, to the grassroots, it could resolve the crisis. But on the other hand, we have those who still hold the opinion of federalism as a way out of the crisis, those who stand for uh, separation, and there are those who stand for united Cameroon, among others. Now, uh, at this juncture, there's still a lot to decide on which is the right path to take in order to resolve the crisis. Yeah, Luis, you're right. There is still a lot to, to be decided, but uh, I must say that if you want to effectively solve the Cameroonian problem, you must first of all acknowledge the fact that uh, each and every person is right in his or her own capacity and in his or her own, own opinion. Mm. No opinion is wrong. That is the first thing you must bear in mind if you want to effectively solve the Cameroonian problem. When you believe that uh, every opinion is right, that it gives now room for, 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 for a level ground of communication. If you then, if we get the room for a level ground of uh, communication, then we will actually then have to understand why they're receiving the problem, why a problem started, and before the problem started, how were things being managed was it very successful or if we claim there is amelioration how can the am 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 amelioration be used for the benefits of uh, Cameroonians yes it's almost three to four years down the line since the major national dialogue where where whereby the, the the effective or decentralization was adopted as a way to address the crisis or to address what was uh, splitting the country but now till now many people even those that actually voted for the effective decentralization rather think that it was just a means to, to, to maybe extract money from the government to steal from the government without effective work being done so now we have to understand yes it revolves around power it revolves around the people being around being at the center of control it revolves around power being controlled by members of the grassroots but how do we do that in all forms of government it can always be done it can always be done even in uh, even in unitary systems, even in, even in the uh, decentralized system, in federal systems, even in uh, whatever form of government, there is a possibility for power to belong to the grassroots, grassroot, and that is always contained in a document called the constitution. The people design the constitution through their representatives. What do the people need through their representatives? It should be what is needed. We can use every word that the English language wants to put it call it decentralization we can add effective there we can call it federalism we can call anything but as far as the terms are not well stated or well specified and then there are jurisdiction to limit the operators to know that this is where my past ends this is where my area of jurisdiction ends there is a time there is a moment that a director will feel that there is an interference. There is a moment that a, uh, 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 maybe a regional president will feel that there is an interference. There is a time that a mayor will feel that there is an interference. So first of all, if we are looking at the possibility of how to effectively solve the problem, we should forget about the names we are calling and we should look at the areas of jurisdiction, who is supposed to take what, which position is supposed to take what, 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 what are the paths we are giving to the chiefs and what will limit to the first class chief and what will limit the first class chief from encroaching into the areas of uh, of jurisdiction of the second class chief what is the areas we are ascend we are giving to a mayor and what will limit the 
regional president from assessing it if we do that as far as it is inscribed into the constitution and everybody have that sense of satisfaction and we know that we respect our areas of jurisdiction i don't think that there will ever be a problem or there will be that power tussle or there will be that cry of whosoever is leading or whatsoever is leading or what belongs to whosoever so i know that Cam in cameroon we have been good with crafting names giving pro uh, propositions most of the propositions we re we, we, we even receive across Cameroon are propositions of self-aggrandizement, propositions that somebody wants to be accredited for, propositions that we will think or we feel that we are the better people to oversee them so that we will have an opportunity to, to maybe have control. So the first thing Cameroon needs to do now in solving the problem is to first of all lose the control. We should be willing each and every leader should be willing to lose control first before we can have an effective implementation. If we cannot lose control, if we cannot forget about our own selves, then there is absolutely no way Cameroon can ever come out of the, 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 the quagmire we are finding ourselves in. Time will come and go, we will craft different words, we will borrow different words, but there will be actually no solution. We have to forget about ourselves and think about Cameroon as a people, think about Cameroon as a nation, think about the progress of the country think about the, 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 the what binds us together as a people not thinking about what we stand to benefit as individuals from a country that is already sinking that is the only thing that can actually push Cameroon ahead the national dialogue is failing today because there are many people who still believe that their their ideas are supposed to be implemented their ideas were the best their ideas should be implemented which is a big problem for cameroon i think that if cameroon must advance we have to keep that behind us and we have to ignore that and think of a cameroon that each and every person has the same equality each and every person have the same access to every resource and each and every person respect his or her area of functions all right uh, Mr. Germans, thanks very much for that. Uh, let me turn to you, uh, Mr. Gene Elvis. Uh, now, uh, we're looking at uh, at this level where we are. We're counting three years after the major national dialogue. On the other hand, uh, those in the diaspora, Dr. Nick Santo and Mr. Foncher, say that we have a better proposition towards resolving the crisis. They highlighted as well. Uh, the aspect of maybe an effective uh, decentralization in resolving the crisis. Mr. Javans, uh, it talks about inclusiveness. And uh, we are here, we're talking about a crisis that is uh, five years old and counting. Uh, many of the deaths now are going unreported. Many have still been displaced. The uh, burnings, of course, remain unaccount unaccountable, unaccounted for. We have a situation that uh, it's calling for a solution, needs an urgent solution. Uh, the level where we are, where do you think we can, you know, move to? What direction should we take? Uh, you equally made mention that the arrest of three in the United States will not create much impact, but we need an impact. We need solutions to the crisis. What do you think uh, could be done in that light? Before I tell you what I think should be done, and which will be a repetition, because we have repeated that here on this platform and other uh, sister media before, uh, I want to begin by pointing out the fact that when someone is called an honorable or an excellency, uh, it should be reflected by what they say and by what they do. And uh, to this, I must say I feel a little disappointed when I hear Dr. Santos speak, as well as um, uh, Mr. Foncham, they who were at the origin of this crisis, and you and I know exactly the root causes of the crisis, when I see today and I hear them talk about um, uh, decentralization, uh, regionalization, special status as some uh, possible solutions to the Anglophone crisis, and I think Mr. Foncha even worsens in when he tries to give the impression that the problem is about the northwest, sidewest, southwest divide, and he talks with so much certainty. I wonder where he got his statistics from to want to think that that is where the problem lies. I say I feel disappointed because they who were at the origin of this crisis are supposed to know better than any other person that the Anglophone crisis or what we call to the Anglophone problem in this country was never or didn't stem from the issue of decentralization or regionalization or an issue of a special status. And like I say, I feel disappointed when doctor tells me such a thing. I don't know when you talk about a special status in this context, I don't understand. For a country where two independent 
people or partners of equal status came together. I don't know at one point in time, the Southern Cameroonians lost their status to think that it is Yaoundé today that we need to give them a special status in that union where they were supposed to live a 50-50, um, a 50-50 lifestyle, if you put it, put it that way. I feel disappointed at that level. Now, talking about what I think we should do, we have said uh, recently on this very platform that there is a need, like the other parties have said, for inclusive dialogue. Every Cameroonian should feel that he is in his own country and he belongs. Those are some of the things that have caused and brought us to where we are today, where you live in a country that is supposedly yours, but you are given the impression that you are even a third class citizen. You are relegated to the background and you are not supposed to partake. When it comes to the political lifestyle of your country, when it comes to the economy, you are nowhere. It comes to your resources, you are exploited to the fullest. Those are some of the things that Cameroonians, especially of the British Southern Cameroons, have decried. And until we get inclusive, and like I said before, sit on the dialogue table and go back to the root causes of this crisis and we look at it from that perspective, I'm afraid no matter what we do, we shall simply be beating about the bush. We should learn to understand. And when I say we, I keep insisting that I am referring to Yawundi. I am referring to the regime in place. They should learn to understand that in 1961, when we came together, we came as two equal partners, and it was agreed. If there are things that need to be decided upon, we sit as equals and we decide upon them. It should not be a matter of an individual or a particular regime coming in to hand down to the other party what he thinks is good for them and or not. Remember that today we are in a situation where the thing has gone to an extremist point where today the former British Southern Cameroonians, particularly the Ambassadorian fighters, they think that the only option <clears throat> is total independence. Why did they get to that level? Because when they proposed their political idea, what they thought could be something that could make them feel comfortable within this union, the idea of a federation that was proposed through the concession members, what happened? They were immediately termed terrorists. And jail. So when you are with a brother who does not permit you to express your views, when you are with a brother who does not think that you are, you, you share the same blood like he does, and other things that he is superior to you and can always simply dictate upon you what you should do, there is a problem at that level. We cannot talk about the, 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 the what they call the major national dialogue. We have often reminded Mr. Big Ben that that was no dialogue because it was a monologue within the same camp of persons. The main, uh, uh, the, 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 the both stakeholders, that is the state of Cameroon, and those sponsoring the arms fighters, fighters were never represented in this particular so-called dialogue. So we cannot call it a dialogue. And like I always like to remind, you cannot sit with your friends that understand your language, decide and take certain resolutions on something, and you want to impose it on the other person who was not even being part of that particular dialogue, and you think it holds. Let the only understand that there is a need that we sit down and we all agree. Like my predecessor uh, just said, the other panelists on the, on the, the story with you rightly said, some people, all of us, we must learn at one point in time to understand that we must let go some of our positions that we have taken and accept what other persons are also proposing and it must be that way on both camps so that we come to a compromise and we get to a, 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 a level of decision that we can agree and implement and it works for every other person. But for as long as they wouldn't think that they will hang on the barrel of the gun, for as long as they wouldn't think that they have the monopoly, of proposing ideas, then I'm afraid that this thing will go longer than, or it's going to stay far longer than we think. I want to remind Dr. Ajay, even before he takes the floor after me, that the issue in the British Southern Cameroons was never a matter of decentralization. It was never a matter of regionalization. It was never a matter of the special status. I even feel irritated when people mention that idea of a special status, because I will always want to find out who is handing who a special status in this particular union. That is the problem. You do not get a wife or, 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 or a, into a union with a woman, and at one point in time, one person in that union thinks that he is the one who must always impose and tell the other partner what he or she should do in that union. No, if they say it is 50 50, it is 50 50. Let Yawunde understand that we need to talk. And before I, uh, I hand over the mic, I want to add that in resolving the present and reform crisis, Yawunde must also learn. That the fact that you do not belong to their circle of friends does not make you an enemy to the state. 
Because that's another thing we have in this country. Those of us who are of the opposition, the moment you do not speak the language they speak, then you become an enemy to the state. Automatically, you are promoting terrorism in the country. Automatically, they look for an opportunity where they can take you to the military tribunal court, and you are judged for you. I think the 2014 uh, 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 terrorism law. And that is one thing that Cameroonians are perhaps somehow married people over. Because the government in Yaoundé is struggling to manipulate Cameroonians to want to think that because they do not buy what the Amazonian fighters are fighting for, they can simply declare them terrorists and so it binds. And they are now hanging on it to think that the US government can arrest people in the US and send them back to Cameroon as terrorists. What I should also remind here is that internationally, as of now, they have not yet, I mean the ambassador fighters, they have not yet been internationally recognized as terrorists. So we should not think that when the wounded calls an individual a terrorist, automatically it makes it binding and you be terrorist. Because even right here in the country, we have seen individuals who have been judged as terrorists. People who are in Cameroon and have never left Cameroon, but for the simple fact that they speak a language that goes contrary to what the wounded speaks, a language that goes contrary to what the wounded understands. So please... I think that Yawinde should listen to Cameroonians as a whole from all walks of life, both home and abroad, and understand that if you are not a member of their system, it does not necessarily make you an enemy to the state. They do not love this country more than any other person. Sometimes I even like to remind that some people have even gone to an extremist position today and picked up arms against the nation because you did not give them that liberty. You did not give them that room to be able to express themselves within their own nation to actually let the nation know exactly what they feel or fear for the country and under take into consideration their own viewpoints. Thank you. Mr. Junior Elvis, we appreciate you. We got you. Dr. Nick Santo, uh, let me just give you room to possibly maybe react. You you got uh, Mr. Junior Elvis and his opinion. And uh, let's give you the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Um, I think he called my name about four or five times and uh, brought his own opinion on issues. But let me tell you, political. let me remind him, Mr. Barney, that uh, political maturity entails uh re re-evaluating your position at any given time and take new decisions to that effect so uh unfortunately you mentioned that uh i and Funcha were at the forefront of the of the of the struggle yes we're at the forefront of the struggle because we uh by virtue of our uh, our eloquence were able to be to be to be used as spokes spokespersons spokespersons Foncha was a spokesperson as well as i was a spokesperson so um during that time we we were like reporting decisions that were made by others and when we started reevaluating some of these decisions we discovered that there were a lot of erroneous misinterpreted information that or distorted information concoction of lies and other things that were passed on to the people for example i see like what you are talking about federalism uh, actually i i know that for the sake of for the purpose of uh, the non-existence of freedom of the of, of expression to some extent in cameroon you are not able to say independence or you are not able to say on conditional independence you moderated your position to federation so that you should fall within a one cameroon because let me tell you the people who are picking up arms and the people who are doing or the arm robbers who have gotten into this to be killing people kidnapping for ransom uh, uh cutting people's fingers and making them to eat them barbaric acts i mean these individuals are people who any some of these your positions that you have mentioned here who who want that everybody should follow their line of thought if you don't follow their line of thought oh you are against our independence you must be kidnapped those persons who capture people kidnap people and pass death sentences in their bedrooms abroad those kind of persons who say it's independence or nothing those kind of people are hiding under your umbrella of federalism to continue perpetrating this war because let me tell you the amber have killed more civilians than the military amber has killed more civilians than the military amber has committed more harm to people than the military that's what you know and you know that by saying federalism means some ambers are hiding under federalism when they come to the camera but when they go behind they talk of unconditional independence and that's what is foiling this conflict so the point is we are 25 million cameroonians 
even as a federalist who you want to talk about building a solid Cameroon, even a federated or a decentralized Cameroon, you should be able to be factual, face the camera and say, we should condemn all these people who are hallucinating, who are living in a delusional world. You would proclaim yourself Amber, but you are holding a Cameroon passport in your pocket. You are deceiving yourself. You are containing your amber. You are holding a CFA frame in your pocket. I, you are deceiving yourself. You are, you, are, you are living in a delusional world. Stop deceiving ourselves. Let us walk towards the resolution of this crisis. Walking towards the resolution of this crisis is that, one, what came out of the Grand National Dialogue should be fully implemented so that the man on the street should be happy. Decentralization was given about 20 years ago and further was, was never implemented. And at the Grand National Dialogue, if that was a resolution among the 25 million Cameroonians, of which a small portion was not represented, which is the people fighting for a complete independence who were not represented, then it doesn't mean that this minor, uh, minority that was not represented uh, 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 over, over, overpowers the entire population that was seated there. They came out with something. My question now is, there's something that they came out with. Have they fully implemented what they came out with there so that we can test it and see if the man on the street will be happy or not? Because believe me, all of us who were in your own position of either federation or independence began moderating our steps, began reasoning with the majority of Cameroonians because we found out that thieves, Armed robbers, war entrepreneurs used this situation of the crisis to come and manifest their real intentions. And their real intentions were the ones that we speak to continuously support those. Unfortunately, we lost contact to Santu, hoping that we re-establish connections with you. Uh, but just uh, time for us to talk with uh, you, Mr. Javans. We're looking at um, a broad solution to the crisis, which uh, many, of course, on ground are hoping that solutions could come someday. But if at now, three years since the major national dialogue, we are still to uh, see uh, resolutions of that major national dialogue being implemented, just like Dr. Nick Santu is saying that the solutions needed to be tested, needed to be implemented fully and effectively. If uh, up to now we've not seen those solutions being implemented, those resolutions being implemented, do you think that there's a will to solve this uh, crisis? And do you think there's another uh, mechanism or something that can be done? And if we give it a chance, do you think it's still going to have an effect in resolving the crisis? If resolution taken in 2019 till now have not been implemented, even though many are blaming the fact that not all the parties were, were, were present, but then resolutions were taken. And at now, up to now, we have not seen a full implement, implementation of those resolutions. Do you think another solution could be possible? Uh, before I get to that level, there is one thing I want to state it here. Yeah. Most often than not, when I listen to Cameroonians talk about the crisis, especially those of us from the English extraction, it saddens my heart a lot. It pains me so much because uh, we, we have so many people who absolutely have no understanding of what a crisis is and how a crisis is supposed to be managed. And uh, I keep on asking myself, how could we even constitute a government of um, about 50 ministers, approximately 50 ministers, with none of them understanding or really uh, wanting to table how a crisis could effectively be controlled or managed and we have citizens who have no clue or who deliberately refuse to understand how a crisis can be managed or a crisis can be resolved uh, most often than not i've heard many cameroonians say that uh, we talk about dialogue who should we dialogue with we cannot dialogue with separatists we cannot dialogue with these people but the reality is that uh, once there is a problem whether we like it or not we have to dialogue we have to talk we talk with our enemies on a daily basis and uh, we, we get to resolve or we get to form amicably settlements and so on and so forth down the lines uh, yeah, there was a measure of national dialogue 
makes us think that the, 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 the resolutions have not been implemented or what is even a guarantee that the resolutions of the dialogue could have actually maybe resolved the problem. May I remind us that by the time this dialogue was being held in the 2019, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. uh, the, the leader, the then leader of the Ambazonian crisis, Sisiko Tabe, was in the cell in Yaoundé and uh, there was also a leading political figure in Cameroon the person of uh, Maurice Camto who of course was absent and uh, there was Nijon Frundi who was present but now uh, we know that the national dialogue was held under some specific conditions the, uh, we had the prime minister the current prime minister head of government John Gute, John Gute stated clearly that uh, everything they are open to discussion but they are not open to discuss anything on the form of state but now the I think there was a time Cameroonians should understand that uh, we have implemented every of every possibility of a crisis uh, management at that point in time and we have failed because the first way uh, which we tried to address was some state ministers so some officials coming on air to deny that actually such a problem is not existing and we know that's the first step in crisis management whereby you totally deny that the something it's not existing to kill it but when you deny and you see that is there what do you have to do you are left with no option than to try to maybe look into it when you look into it now you give a one-way solution and you see that it's still yet not going that is when you have to go now into a dialogue and into that dialogue there have to be that need for everybody to come to the table for everybody to say that we are giving up ourselves to see the possibility of us staying together because this thing does not affect the government alone it affects everybody it puts everybody on the brink of collapse it has killed many business it has killed many civilians it has killed many people from all the camps people have been dying what do we do do we celebrate are we are we hosting the feast of blood are we hosting the feast of death no of course we are not doing that what should we do to see that yes we come to an agreement we come to a consensus to move ahead shall we keep on saying that we will not dialogue or we will not talk with this particular person because it is our enemy if we are saying that we will not talk with this person because it is our enemy are we saying that we are actually eradicating the notion of apology are we saying that we are actually eradication the notion of accepting differences of course not you cannot be eradicating such, such notions and you are a human these things have gone over and over. They have tried and tried. Before those that were even taking part in the Grand National Dialogue are now giving us a balance sheet because every day we ordinary citizens will see that they, we are not seeing the impact. But now they will tell us that about 70%, 80%, 90% of what was discussed there has been realized. When you get when you get such balance sheet, what is it telling us? That means if we are saying that, okay, what was discussed there has not been implemented. Meanwhile, those that were there are telling us that what was discussed there has already already been implemented to the two of above 75 percent and the crisis is still there it's not going to an end it's sure there is a problem what do we have to do to solve the problem we have to understand that maybe if 75 or above 75 percent of what was discussed and has been is a claim to have been implemented and we are not seeing any physical uh, reduction or we are not seeing uh, maybe a significant end of the crisis on ground we should understand that there was a problem and we should try to use a diagnostic approach to understand where that problem was coming from and we tackle it which in this case i still emphasize that is on that part of including everybody everybody coming on the table having that understanding that this thing pains each and every cameroonian from a particular angle we should look into it each and everybody should come to the table without a condition coming to the table understanding that you are coming to address a problem you are con coming to address the number of deaths we have recorded in the country you are coming to address the number of businesses that have collapsed you are coming to address the number of Cameroonians that have been struggling to leave the country dying in the Mediterranean Sea because of a crisis that have simply limited their way of feeding you are coming to maybe talk on behalf of the Cameroonians that have lost their jobs in the Northwest and the Southwest. You are coming to talk of the multiple Cameroonians that are facing accommodation issues in Douala, 
in uh, in Yaoundé. You are coming to talk about people that are, have to leave regions and go to the north northern part of Cameroon and start agriculture there, facing the challenges agriculture is posing. Meanwhile, they have never been a part of that. You are coming to talk about a problem that faces an entire country. That is the only way we can actually maybe try to mitigate the, 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 the impact of the crisis we are having on ground now. But if we are only thinking that, okay, maybe a particular solution was proposed, or maybe some people are ex extremists, why people are in context, we are missing the point. So nobody here is in context. Everybody seems to be out of context, and we have to all come back in context. And that context should be the context of Cameroon. That context should be the context of the Cameroonian people. That context should be the context of peace. And the context should be the context that will give each and every Cameroonian a liberal mindset to understand that he or she belongs to a fatherland called Cameroon. If we don't do that, we might be going through the same of uh, the, the same uh, avenue like the earth rotates across its orbit every uh, every year but we will never get a solution i think that cameroonians should be serious and get a solution to what has been putting us down over the years all right uh, mr jervis we appreciate that very much uh, uh mr bane of this uh, before now before the the arrest of uh, three in the united states Many were looking up to the United States as, uh, or the diaspora as having much to do or much to say when it comes to uh, resolving the crisis. Now, th there's what maybe could be a, a confusion that has been thrown in the camp of the uh, the diaspora when uh, considering the arrest of three involved in the crisis in Cameroon. Now, how do you think this is going to affect resolving the crisis, considering that many are looking up to uh, a possible solution and a quick solution to 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 this crisis uh, actually i will agree with you and agree with all those who think that the diaspora has much to do or say you see uh why do i say when we look at the situation at hand now i will start by reminding us that when we talk about the anglophone problem in Cameroon, it is a legal and genuine problem that requires that we sit down as level-headed uh, 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 Cameroonians and we look into it and then we get resolutions. But the unfortunate thing is, like many have said, is that some persons hijacked something, a problem that was genuine, and they have made it a personal issue, a money trunk, a money making uh, 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 business for them. But now, talking about the diaspora and the role they may have to play or what they may need to do, I still think that if our brothers at the level of the diaspora, they could sit down and talk to their own families, that's the other level, I think individual levels, we begin to talk to our family members back at home, you see, trying to let them understand the need and the reason why we should not that extremist in some of the positions that we have taken, I think it can lead us somewhere. I think it can get to somewhere. Secondly, those of them in the diaspora who still have control over some of the forces on ground zero, I think it is still a place for them and they have that opportunity to talk to their forces, to talk to those who are still loyal to them, to understand that they may continue the fighting that they are fighting for, but without inflicting pain the way they are doing. Remember, I started by saying one thing here, that if today the southern Cameroonians are even turning their backs against the, uh, the, the Ambazonian fighters, it is not necessarily because the government of Cameroon has been doing everything good for the southern Cameroonians, but it is simply because those who came as brothers and proposed something turned out and proved to their own very communities that they were out for some private gains and not the general good of the people. So I think the diaspora still has much to say. The one thing I would like to warn about is our brothers of the diaspora sometimes think that being in the diaspora makes them automatically smarter than any other person. And so whatever idea that comes from them must be totally accepted. I say that is a fallacy. It is wrong. They must learn to understand that when they are bringing their ideas from the diaspora, they should learn that they are also talking to people on the ground who are equally educated and who also reason and have their own ideas. So you should come to them and be able to discuss and settle and, and uh, get to agreements. People should agree on certain things before you can get to a final conclusion. We nobody should 
that he or she has a monopoly of ideas. Because unfortunately, I agree even with what doctor said a few minutes ago, that at one point in time, when you ambassador themselves, they too are extremists in what they do. Because you do not agree with them, automatically you are a black leg, you are an agent of a republic, you are this, you are that, you are either killed or your limbs are, you are deprived of your limbs or you are kidnapped for ransom and all That is the, 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 the unfortunate situation that that which pushed them into picking up arms is the same thing that they are doing. So what I think is that they have a role to play. They can still talk to the people on ground and they will listen to them. And I believe so much in that, you see. But they must also know that being in the diaspora doesn't make you smarter than any other person. Now, one thing I would like to point out, uh, uh, particularly to my doctor, Mr. To doctor, is that uh, he should try to get a little closer to understand the PAP. Because he has said certain things that I do not time. When he says when we come on platforms, we should be able to face the camera squarely and condemn. I want to think that if he had been following the PAP since the advent of this crisis, he would have understood by now that we are one of those political parties that have condemned any form of injustice and barbarism, be it orchestrated by the government of Cameroon or the Ambazonians. And when he says that Ambazonians are hiding under the canopy of um, uh, the Federation of the PAP, for instance, to exact their actions and all one love, perhaps it tells me that he doesn't understand the full difference between a Federation and what the Ambazonians themselves are fighting for. Because sometimes we even receive a um, uh, 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 attacks from the same Amazonians for thinking that by discussing federation or proposing a federation, it is because we are agents of the Republic. So I want to think that, Doctor, I think you and I, we even have personal contacts. You can get closer to me to learn more about what the PAP actually is and what we stand for and do not just go with some sweepish um, accusations that do not stand. We do not encourage any form of injustice. We do not encourage any form of barbarism irrespective of who commits it. And I think that stance has always been the stance of the PAP and it remains to date. Then, talking about resolving the issue of um, uh, the crisis, Mr. Biden, I will still call. I, I appreciate the, my brother who is in the studio with you. I appreciate his ideas. And I will still want to just to queue up to what he has said to add. We must learn to be intellectually honest in this country because that is one thing that has killed Cameroon to where we are today, intellectual dishonesty. We, in, 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 we saw sometimes, like, I think it's about a year today, some people were appointed in this country and they said they are all, their intent, their, their, their mission was to rewrite the history of the country. We are still waiting for this history to be rewritten so that we see exactly what they intend to rewrite in that history because I always like to remind, we know our history and if you are rewriting the history and you, include in that history things that do not stand, tell me that we shall not accept it because we know the history of our country. The problem in this country is resolving our problems from the root cause and not just rewriting the history of the country. <laughs> Secondly, we must learn to show love to one another. I keep saying there are some people in this country who think that they own the country, who think that they have the monopoly of deciding who is a Cameroonian and who, who is a first-class citizen and who is a second-class citizen. We must learn to show love to one another as brothers and let it not just be some sort of lip service that we to claim to say we love each other and all others. It is ironical, for instance, when you look at the world of today, Mr. Big Ben, you will realize that each time this nation is going out of the continent to represent us, it is always with the, 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 the Togo, the fabric from the Northwest region, for instance. But when it comes to managing the political affairs of the country, they will do everything to want to sideline you and keep you at the background. When I say sideline, I must say because there are some political elites <clears throat> who are into government and government will have on them to say, these are your people, these are your people. We want people who are true representatives of their population. That is what we are talking about. We are talking about resolving the crisis in this country. Can you tell me if the two halves of legislation that we have in this country have in an official manner tabled the Anglophone crisis on the table, be it at the National Assembly or at the level of the Senate, to actually discuss it? I will say no. The only long time we saw a minister go to these houses to table the issue of the Northwest Southwest, it was to defend a 40 billion that he needed for a so-called reconstruction plan that we know could never have yielded any fruit on the ground because you could not be talking about reconstruction at the same time when you are yourself actually involved in the destruction of the little that the people have at the, uh, 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 in that part of the country. Then, so the last thing I will be adding here is that when we talk about um, uh, a dialogue, like my brother already in the studio rightly said, mm, we should learn to understand that in a conflict situation, we dialogue with everybody. And when you are in a conflict situation, the best person with whom you dialogue is your enemy. Permit me to use the word enemy in quotes. 
You cannot have a problem with someone and you prefer to talk with someone of your own camp who understands you and you think that you have dialogue to resolve the issue. Tell the person with whom you have the problem, talk with him, and then the two of you must learn to understand that in that dialogue situation, you must learn to let go certain extremist positions that you have both taken so that we can come to a compromise. And lastly, someone mentioned, I think still doctor, I'm sorry doctor, it's not like I have a personal problem. It is just that some of the things that you say, I find it difficult to integrate them. You rightly said it, that some of the, the resolution of the major national dialogue has not still been implemented today. But at the same time, you think that something that is put out Ask yourself the question, why were these resolutions in what the government thinks, the government thinks that the major national dialogue was the, the apex of what they could do? Now, why do you think that today? What they themselves are doing in it, they have not been able to implement. Simply because they themselves, in their in the, in the deep uh, subconscious mind, they know that all these were window dressing and do not actually redress or resolve the problems of the people of the British Southern Cameroon. Because like I rightly pointed out, our problems did not stem from any issue of um, uh, 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 regionalization or decentralization or special status or whatnot. not. We all know where the problem started and until we go back to the drawing board and we begin to face the issues from that, from, from that perspective, I still say that it will be difficult to see this crisis come to an end too soon. At the level of the PAP, Mr. Bidbear, permit me perhaps hand over the mic at this level to let you know that we stand for a federal system of governance and we have never in any way supported any form of injuries committed by be it the state of Cameroon or the Ambazonian fighters. So doctors should not get us wrong and should not quote me wrong anywhere or my party wrong anywhere. We stand for justice anytime, anywhere, anyhow. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Elvis Bane, I'll end with you, Dr. Santo. Uh, Mr. Elvis proposes we have to go back to the drawing board if we all agree that we understand uh, where the problem of phone crisis uh, stems from. And at this juncture, you say you, 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 you've you been proposing, making several propositions to the government with regards to uh, solving the crisis. With regards to what Mr. Elvis says, uh, going back to the drawing board, do you think your ideology, your proposals and your way to us resolve the crisis you think is workable at this time maybe adding to the response you have to give to him as well yeah uh unfortunately we got disconnected i never ended my last uh session but anyway i will just pick from there and address all the issues uh, uh first and foremost when you contacted me for this discussion i accepted because first of all it, it concerns as the topic says, you experience arrest of persons involved in the crisis, of which I'm in the United States, and I also know I'm abreast, both from the U.S. government side and those old activist side who are here living with me in the United States. So that's why I accepted to be here. I did not come to uh, be defending the position of a political party against another political party. My political party is the, C you know, the ruling CPD. I was, I was not here to represent the CPDM or to defend the CPDM against the PAP. Well, I'm not here. I'm here looking at issues with my psychological lenses as a doctor, as a, someone who does a crisis intervention and also troubleshoot, diagnose problems and give recommendations. From, it's from that lenses that I accepted to be here. And so I'm here not to say uh, PAP is right, the CPTM is wrong. I'm here to look for the best possible way in which this case can be resolved. Because let me tell you, we are caught like we are in a dilemma. A dilemma is in a situation whereby one camp claims absolute right and the other camp also claims absolute right that nobody is willing to see another. And in the midst of that, the innocent people who are in the middle are trapped. Children, mothers, parents, older persons are trapped in crossfire because of that no one wants to listen to another the ambers are in the bushes they don't want to come out uh the government also military saying that it is surrender your guns or you die so now political parties should be left out of this issue let us talk about the way to solve this problem and if the government has been able to come out with its own way in which it thinks is best to solve this problem which was through the dialogue they, they, they gave us something to work with they gave us the regionalization, uh, decentralization, special status, and what so not, with some items that had to be asked. The other people who are in the bushes are standing on the same point. It is independence or nothing. It is complete independence or nothing. 
And if you are in a crisis for six years and you cannot move your position an inch, an inch, because dialogue means give and take. Negotiation means give and take. Mediation means so I can say, okay, but listen to what this is. And we see that we remove some of our conditions that it should not be so harsh. That's where federalists like Mr. Bane, every state, PAP, and whatsoever, I say, okay, let's, the, the middle point is a federation. Okay, but now we have to appeal to both parties, continuous appealing. Those of us who are in the middle, those of us who are professionals, those of us who are like, let this excess. We condemn cutting of those hands. We condemn extortion of money from people. We condemn some of the senators and rooms. We condemn this. Okay, the government has given this. Why can we not work with this and improve it? Why can we not work with it? At least the government has given something. Those people are doing nothing other than that. So this is where I am. Not that I'm coming yet to defend the of the CPGM. Coming here to defend the position of uh, 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 whatsoever. The only position I'm going to position I'm defending is my love for a one Cameroon that should be problem free. That is where I stand. So, Mr. Banner, maybe you were aiming your uh, your arrows at the wrong direction. Dr. Nick is here, Honorable Dr. Nick is here to troubleshoot the problem and to propose and to call on all those in the bushes to come out of the bushes. Put those guns, come and let us sit on the table. We propose more solutions as we have been proposing, writing to the government. Even if the government does not implement, I think the pen, the pen speaks louder than the gun. That's what I've been using as an instrument throughout the six years that I've been doing this. The pen, the microphone, and the paper, not guns. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nick uh, Sancho. Dr. Uh, Nicola Sancho, President, One Cameroon Progress, or Congress, rather. Thanks very much for... Uh, your time and your argument. We equally want to appreciate you, Mr. Gene Elvis Bane, National Communication Secretary for the Popular Action Party. We appreciate your argument as well on the program this afternoon. Uh, we had uh, Mr. Nso Foncha, Chairman of New Africa Coalition Front and President of Southwest Indigenous People Association. And uh, we equally have uh, here with us in the studio Mr. Uh, Bofong uh, Javans, teacher and entrepreneur. We appreciate your time for being there on the program this afternoon. Thank you very much. Sorry. All right. And thank you to thank you. the technicians as well as those of you who are watching us back at home. That's where we put an end to today's program, the Pan African debate. We're looking at the arrest of uh, three involved in the crisis in Cameroon, single speaking regions, and its impact on the ground with regards to the fact that the crisis has been ongoing for five years now and counting. We keep a close look on the developments regarding uh, the, stand, the stance of the United States with regards to what is happening in Cameroon and the hope is for a solution and a way out of the crisis. A read broadcast of the program is yours on Monday at exactly 14 hours GMT. More programs are yours on Africa Media. Stay with us and bye-bye for now. <laughs>